Let's see if you can tell the difference between a $5,000 analog synth and an $189 software synth. Can you tell which one of those is the $5,000 one? I honestly can't tell the difference. So in this case, A is a mini Moog, which is going for around $5,000 right now. And B is just from Ciro. Pretty insane how expensive the most popular analog synths are. If you want just a few of them for your studio, it's gonna cost you over $10,000. So I'm gonna show a couple easy ways to replicate their sound in a computer. So let's start a new sound in Serum here. Now the problem with saw waves in Serum is that they're too perfect. Like if I go into the editor here, these right angles on the saw wave, those just aren't gonna happen in an analog synth. So what we need to do is just it up a little bit and then add a little variation. So I'm gonna decrease this grid size. Now I can draw in some lines to just round off those perfect edges so they're not so perfect anymore. Then I'll just copy over that wave and mess this one up a little bit more. So I'm gonna make these edges a little more jagged. And so those edges aren't so sharp, I'm just gonna increase this grid size here. Then I'll go into this filter button to round off the edges a little bit to make it a little smoother. And now, so we can transition between the two waves, I'm just gonna go to this morph button and crossfade them together. So let's exit this and go back into the main part of the synth. Everything we just did is just gonna allow us to add a little bit of variation so everything is not so perfect. So all we have to do to get that movement is just take an LFO and map it to the wavetable and I'll slow it down with this rate a little bit. See how the wave shape is constantly changing now? That's gonna be the first step to getting those slight imperfections in an analog synth. So that technique is exactly what I did with that bass sound you heard at the beginning. So both these oscillators here have that imperfect saw wave that I created for them. And we have LFO3 down here that's just moving them back and forth a little bit. So that's the first thing to keep in mind. Before we move on to the next thing, I just wanted to remind you guys that my new Serum preset pack is out now at BigZSounds.com. You can hear a preview of all the sounds on my website if you want to go check it out. Anyway, another big part of getting analog sound is having little changes in pitch. My favorite way to do this is with an LFO, so I'm just going to pull up this totally random shape I made, then I'll take that and map it to the fine pitch of both of the oscillators. That's obviously moving the pitch way too much, but let me show you the best way to have full control over that. So we can go into the matrix tab, and for both those fine pitch automations we just added, let's change the source to macro two for both of them. Now in macro two down here, I can just name it pitch drift, and now it's gonna be able to control the amount of pitch variation we have. So when it's all the way down, the pitch isn't gonna be moving at all, but then when we turn it all the way up, you can hear that pitch move back and forth. We just want a subtle effect here, so I'll turn it down. So making sure the sound waves and the pitch aren't quite perfect are two of the main things, but there are a couple finishing touches we can make too. So one thing you can do is take a noise oscillator. But for this sound, we're actually gonna turn the noise oscillator like almost all the way down so you can't even really hear it. But what we're gonna do is go to oscillator B and click FM from noise oscillator. And that way we can use the noise oscillator to make this sound a little bit dirtier. That's obviously too much. You wanna put it at a point where you can barely even hear that it's doing anything just to make it a tiny bit grittier. So you'll notice for a lot of these analog changes, they're really subtle changes, but in the end, they add up to make a big difference. The other thing I'm doing is adding some resonance to the filter over here. So here's the filter we have on this bass sound. I'll turn the resonance down and then bring it back in to show you how much it's helping. And the last thing I wanna show you is how to add a really cool vibrato effect to any sound. All I'm gonna do is take LFO2, map it to the fine pitch of both the oscillators. I'm also gonna map it to the volume of both the oscillators, just so it dips down in volume a little bit 
along with the changes in pitch. So this is gonna be an effect we wanna just automate on one or two notes in the bass line. So to do that, we can just go into the matrix tab and for each of the things we just did, I'm gonna change the source to macro one. And you can see the volume changes we just made right here. I'll make sure the source is macro one for those volume changes too. So now we have macro one down here. I'll just call it vibrato. Now with this knob, we can just add automation on certain notes. So obviously this is just one example with one bass sound, but you can take these ideas and apply them to any sound that you want to get that analog feel on. Also go check out my new serum pack at BigZSounds.com. I also have a bunch of drum packs and other cool stuff on there. So go check it out. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.